Hi there, welcome back to another review. Today I thought we'd have a look at the first film in the phenomenal Godzilla franchise. I've got my humongous box set here from Criterion, um, which is um, first 15 films from the Showa era, uh, 1954 to 75. So it would just be, like with everything I say, if I'm going to do a film series, if you can see me, um, if I'm going to do a film series, I always start with the first film, um, just get into it. Um, and just like I say, just start the beginning and just go uh, start number one and then hopefully if there's an audience for these videos, we'll progress through all of them. So it's made in 1954 and obviously produced and distributed by uh, Toho. Often ri rightly so held as a monumental achievement in the world of cinema and one of the best monster movies ever made. Not only just monster movies, but one of the best Japanese movies ever made. Um, looking at the classic ones, you know, like Kira Kurosawa's, but Godzilla is always pretty up, you know, pretty much up there as well in regards to you know classic films from you know what japan has made um directed by Shiro honda the film was released in the west as godzilla king of the monsters as um they did with a lot of uh, godzillas and a lot of films where you know that uh, when they were marketed in western sort of audiences and uh released upon um in foreign territories they sort of cut out a lot of the you know scenes and interjected their own scenes most notably in this film when they um distributed it abroad it was replaced by Raymond Burr who most notably was in sort of uh, Ironside and he was sort of the killer in Rear Window um, but here we'll be looking at the Japanese original as mentioned with everything I saw review um, I'm all I always much prefer to watch the way the directors sort of intended it regardless of who the director is or the filmmakers are um, I think it's very I almost much always prefer to watch the original there are times when a remake is sometimes or a different version is better but um even if that's the case i still much prefer to watch the original <coughs> and um yeah just be giving you my thoughts on this on the classic godzilla film it's hard to i mean when you think this was made in 1954 and you know they're still hollywood is still obviously making you know they're making Godzilla films now I mean it's just yeah incredible that I think it's even got I think it's in the Guinness World Records isn't it Godzilla for being like the longest running franchise um, ever in film or something like that along them lines I'm sure some of you will know um, what I'm talking about but yeah it's meant to be just like, I think it got a record or something like that so the whole film can be seen um, it's very deep this first film of Godzilla it's very um, there's a very strong moral undercurrent to the story there's a very sort of um a lot of film uh, things in this film were done intentionally um in regards to um like things like nuclear weapons and uh war and just dangerous weapons be you know um, there's a very um like i say questions raised in this movie there's they, it can this film is very much one of the deeper uh kaiju monster films that you ever will see um into the say you can Godzilla can be seen as a metaphor for nuclear weapons, and I think <coughs> that was pretty much the intention with this movie. Like God, Godzilla is, um, he is meant to represent, you know, the dangers of nuclear weapons and nuclear technology. Um, obviously, when this film was made, and you know, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was pretty much still on people's minds. I mean, it wasn't even ten years old at that point. Um, I think it was still pretty much raw and fresh in people's memories and people's um people of japan's sort of like psyche i think it was very much still there so very stomach very much real um and i think this film for a lot of people i think that that resonated a bit too hard for them this film like um you know the the what godzilla represented um i think the the film was very very much an answer to that like very much an answer to the bombings um when when stripped away is just a monster movie um like i say this film isn't just a kaiju stereotypical run of the mill uh, monster movie it could have been, you know it could also could also have been seen like the movie was made to help the general public like of japan sort of um come to terms with it uh, in a way like get to terms with um to see um, a, like a story unfold on screen that was maybe uh, explaining things if, if if okay through the use of a giant monster, but um, making them sort of just come to terms with it, I suppose is the sentence I'm looking for. You know, just with what's happened, which I don't think anybody um, really ever could, to be honest with you. But I just think it was a way of um, 
you know, maybe helping them in a way um, to get their bomb, bomb, you know, the bombings and what happened just maybe out their consciousness, even just for a, a short time, um, you know, as a sort of a way to move forward with their lives and, um, you know, things like that. I mean, this was far, far from your stereotypical B-movie. This wasn't just a monster parody or, you know, this wasn't just like your stereotypical B-movies that you saw at the time. Um, this was a this was a film that had very much a message to get across, that had a, a say, a moral theme there. Um that still resonates to this day, obviously. I mean, you have to remember that, like I said, you know, the bombings of them cities was not even a decade at that point. And a lot of images in this film, such as children in hospitals, people with radiation, cities in flames, uh, the fear of something they can't control, almost a, it, like I can fully um, appreciate that must have been all too real. Um, for Japanese audiences when this was released at the cinema. Um, and I think, in a, in a way, I did read somewhere that was pretty much Honda's intention to make it like that. Um, I do recall once, like, I've read somewhere that he said to, like, his staff and crew, look, if you're not going to take this 100% seriously, if you're viewing this as some just stupid monster film, then get off my set. Because, you know, he was trying to make, take away the element, like I say, it's just, quote-unquote, a monster kaiju movie. This is very much a serious movie with, like I say, a strong message. Um, I say, forget it's a guy in a rubber suit. Um, what you have is a very real macabre movie about the dangers of weapons and how we can't control nature. And like they said, they wanted the monsters to give off like the fear of an atom bomb. And that's what they went for. Um, obviously, you know, with Godzilla, Godzilla being like radioactive and the post-war commentary that it like represents... Um, I believe at one stage, getting out of that sort of post-war sort of discussion there, I think at one stage Godzilla was actually going to be sort of a giant octopus, I believe. I think that was something they were um, sort of looking into because I think they, were, they was inspired by a film with, like, was it The Creature from 20,000 Fathoms or something along them lines, I think it's called. I think they were very much... That was a film they were very much inspired by. I've probably got the title wrong. Um, but I think they was going to use, like, a sort of a giant octopus or a giant squid or something along uh, like that. Um, but they, you know, and they was going to use stop motion effects, um, but obviously that was going to take too long, might have been a bit too cost effective. Um, the people inside the suit, um, you know, usually only being able to appear, like, appear in the suit for three minutes at a time um, before passing out. That's how hard it was being in this suit. <clears throat> I love how even when uh, the movie starts and you get the opening sort of credits and the text scroll, like, you can still hear that classic Godzilla raw and you get that classic Godzilla theme and it just really that I mean the music in this absolutely fantastic um really well done let's say just the opening um of the film itself you already know you're in for something special um so basically regarding the premise of the film uh well I mean monster giant monster attacks you know it's probably all you know you think it is but no there is a lot more to this film if you've never seen it um a lot more deeper than um, I would say some of the you know American ones that have been made, but um, if you like the American versions, good for you. Um, I'm not a huge lover of them myself, but um, so basically ships are disappearing, catching fire, fishing is not sort of all dried up. Um, rescue boats are get you know they're going to help, but they're disappearing as well. So it's like what's going on? We keep losing people. What's the deal here? Um, and this old man basically says it's Godzilla causing this, um, causing this, and he's like this old man from the village, and he says they he says does at one point say they used to offer like a girl to Godzilla, and they used to do this like sort of ceremony, and there's like sort of this dance that the villagers are doing. He says this is all sort of that remains of this ceremony. So Godzilla is known to some people. Um, so they then a storm happens and then there's some good effects with this storm as well just even with the like i say just this minute where the rain is happening you know the sets are shaking and things like that and there's one shot in particular that's really 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 well done um though after the after the storm not everybody believes it was a storm um a lot of people believe um there was something else there um you know, then we meet like a senior paleontologist who says there are like giant footprints and there's cavities that haven't been explored. Um, on inspection of these footprints, and you know where he's saying to um, have a look, they they find sort of radiation. They find radiation in the well, um, so th that's put. They think right, what's going on here? Because I say it's sort of radioactive. Um, 
like I said, the noise of the footsteps as well when sort of Godzilla's approaching. I mean, you can see easily where sort of Spielberg got it for sort of the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. It's got that big, loud stomp, stomp, stomp. Um, great sound this movie, as I say. And, they, you know, and they're investigating, and then Godzilla's head sort of pops up sort of from behind the mountain, behind the hill. Um, so that's sort of the first sort of shot we get of Godzilla. Um, believe they believe like he evolved from sort of the Cretaceous period and he went from like marine to terrestrial life um, and they're blaming sort of the H-bomb tests on like driving him from his natural habitat they reckon that's the reason why he's come up from the surface because they're blaming it on the you know hydrogen bombs and the testing of these things um, and uh, they're, they're, all of them are unsure about whether to go public. Um, they're going to attack Godzilla with depth charges, but the man in charge doesn't want Godzilla harmed, arguing that he should be studied, not harmed. Like, this is a creature that should be sort of, um, you know, not disposed of. He shouldn't be killed. They're, you know, there's things to learn from Godzilla that we should, you know, we should be studying and taking into account. Um and Emiko's daughter was going to marry one, basically a little subplot love triangle where she was going to marry one of his colleague, colleagues, Serizawa, but she's fallen for someone else, basically. And it's revealed that Serizawa, who um, has been working on like sort of this ultimate weapon in, that he calls the Oxygen Destroyer. So that's so you've got this love triangle thing going on there as well as sort of Godzilla attacking, just mixes and just gives the film a bit more depth and gravitas rather than just it being about this giant monster um, attacking. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the times that we see Godzilla is a distance sh shot, it, which really works. When, rather than being up close, I think... When you see Godzilla walking and it's a distance and he's like, whether he's in the water or wherever he may be, I think sometimes the distance shot work really well. I think, especially with the music, it's not just in regards to, okay, because the further you are, you can't just tell it's a guy in a suit. But I think the further you are away, it just looks, you can't really make it out. And it just makes Godzilla seem more epic and like a lot bigger rather than doing like super close ups all the time. Um, I think, like I say, the distance shots where you see Godzilla walking along really 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 do work um and i think they look really well on camera um so yeah that that looks really good um um so yeah they work and then he basically starts to attack the city you know we get a full body shot he starts to attack the city basically starts attacking trains and things like that um you know and he just basically you see it get the we finally get the full reveal of godzilla then they decide to put up this big fence with bolts running through it uh, sort of along the coast um so at one point the doctor kicks his daughter's new boyfriend out because he wants to kill godzilla because he doesn't believe the same as the paleontologist like he's like well like, if you think godzilla should be killed then get out of my house bearing in mind he's got to tell him that he and he, him and his daughter are now a thing and she's breaking off her engagement with this other guy so he's really probably not timing it you'd probably want to keep on his side if you're going to just tell him that oh by the way i'm also dating your daughter so you're probably I don't agree with you on what we should do with Godzilla, and also, I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this either, but, yeah, little, little subplots there. Um, as I say, her, his daughter's intended. Um, the really the music really works every time we see Godzilla, as I say. I mean, when we get to see him for the first time, he, him using his famous atomic breath, um, and then, he, like, he goes mad at one point. He's basically destroying buildings, massive rampage, even have... Um, we even get, like, a mum and daughter crying at one stage, and this is quite a heartbreaking scene. There's this mum and daughter, and they're sort of hugging, they're embracing each other, and the mum's saying, don't worry, we'll be with daddy soon, and because, you know, through fear of their life, through fear they're going to die of this um, giant creature that's attacking them um you know just the idea they've basically given up at that point they're not even trying to survive she's basically saying you know that is it it's all over you know we'll see daddy soon that also in the same vein there's these people that are reporting on top of the television station and credit to these guys on top of the television station if you've seen the film you know the scene i'm talking about these guys just keep reporting like he keeps reporting godzilla's like literally 10 feet away, like, he's massively co like close, and he's like, well, Godzilla's approaching, is this farewell, um, what power he's got, and he's literally right next to Godzilla, and everything, I mean, credit to him, I mean, this guy, give, you know, give that man a raise, um, he, they say, it's just like, is this the end, farewell, ladies and gentlemen, so-and-so reporting, um, just like, he just keeps going, um, 
there's a real, real sad scene in this. I mean, the scene that stuck out for me most from this film um, was when you see people have been killed and children infected, uh, crying with radiation. Um, very real, as I said, you know, for for audience in the, audiences in the wake of the bombs with Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki. And it's just the music as well and just seeing children sick and ill, knowing that people have died in the city, um on in flames and things like that it's it just very much um like i said to you earlier you know in the review it must have left a bit of a bad taste a bit of a sour taste i'd imagine in a lot of the japanese public's um mouths um watching that um but i think like i said that was the intention of the director to sort of address that and to make a statement about that um so the film goes on and basically um they end up using, they use Serizawa's oxygen destroyer on Godzilla at the end with the last sentence from the Doctor being, we may have another Godzilla, you know, if nuclear testing continues. Um, real massive metaphor there of a man, um, you know, of man like created something awful and causes nothing but death and pain and we won't always be able to control that power, which I think is a very important message to get across. I think... You know, we never know when the next Godzilla is going to happen. Uh, they do kill Godzilla in this, um, but they, I think, you know, the oxygen destroyer and just what happens at the end and just some of the images you see in this film, um, it really does bring into question, like, you know, you create something so powerful and you, if you can't harness it, you know, what does that mean for civilization? What does that mean for countries? What does that mean for humanity? You know, there's so many questions in this film. Um, you know, obviously Pig Godzilla has had loads of sequels, remakes, video games, comics, toys, but, you know, this is, this is the film where it all started, and I strongly advise any of you, if you're only, especially if you're only familiar with sort of, you know, the later Godzilla Kong movies or things like that, please go and check out the original, please definitely go and check out the original, because, um, even though, you know, a lot of the younger people out there might sort of laugh at some of the effects and all that. If you're if you're interested in film, um, and you just want to you know watch a really good kaiju movie or just watch where it all started, um, just watch the original Godzilla because there's a, a hell of a lot to appreciate in this movie. A really, really hell of a lot. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review, and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again soon.